lot of people are looking forward to this bike. You know, a lot of people are looking for what's the next thing that's going to come out of Cannondale that kind of pushes the envelope. The idea of Cross is just that we're racing on certain courses, conditions, terrain, on a bike that's really not meant for it. You know, we're riding basically what used to be a road bike off-road. And that was the whole idea of Cross. You were doing something that was not expected out of you or the bike. Now we're seeing courses that will put the riders down some of the some of the gnarliest stuff they can find because that's what that's what the racers want. That's what you know the fans want to watch. I mean, you can hear the crowd around us today. They're just going nuts because they're looking forward to seeing people really just you know, go as, go as deep as they can and, and hopefully make it through that section. We're getting more and more into bikes that are built for what they're used for, you know, the purpose-built cross bike that, that will be incredibly light so when you get off and run you feel like you're picking up nothing, but also when you're riding off-road, when you're doing short, steep climbs and you want a really quick, responsive rear end, and then when you're going down a descent, that's just going to scare the daylights out of you. You know, it's got to have all those things available to it. And, you know, that's what I'm really excited about the new Super X for. I have a very big personal investment in this project. I remember buying the last Super X out of the first batch that came to the U.S. And I raced it the whole season and fell in love with it immediately. You know, that was a while ago. I was in college. Since then, I've owned at least 10 Super X's since then. It's always been my go-to bike for training and playing on gravel roads and racing in the fall. It's, you know, it's a do-everything bike. And being able to work on the new one and making it even better than the last one is a huge honor. It's been a, it's been a great project, and I am beyond happy with what we've ended up with. Tim Johnson, one of our former athletes and our still our, our go-to cyclocross guy is I think well known across the United States and a lot of the world as being one of the one of the top cross racers out there. He has some of the best bike fuel and bike feedback that I've really ever heard. So Tim was obviously very closely involved in the development of this project. We were meeting with him while we were meeting with Stu and trying to figure out what direction we could go with, what would make Tim faster on the bike, what would make Stu's life easier. So we worked on a new geometry and created geometry mules with merging a Frankenstein CAD 10 with a CAD X with our new geometry points and we put Tim out on the bike. I went out on the bike. We did some racing in New England to verify the geometry. Tim just gave us this look. What did you do here? How did you do this? And this is us riding in the parking lot, him first time ever on the bike, drifting both tires on the, on the, on the pavement. It's just, uh, it's a good feeling having him involved. He's, uh, he gives us his thumbs up for the bike and that means a lot to me. So with the Super X, obviously geometry was a huge factor for us. We knew that if we did it right, push the envelope a little bit, we could create some significant advantages for our riders. In an effort to improve traction and agility, we've given the Super X ultra short chain stays, but without any of the usual drawbacks and mud clearance or tire size limitations that you normally compromise yourself with. To do this, we adapted AI or asymmetric integration technology from our FSI and Scalpel SI race bikes. The FSI, when it was in development, we were looking at what the problem is currently. It's the distance between your tire to your front derailleur. It's the distance between your tire and to the chainstay. It's, it's a packaging problem. There's not enough clearance there for everything to work together correctly. So what we devised was asymmetric integration, or AI. So AI is taking advantage of what Cannondale does, which is system integration, which is building our own components to build a bike. We re the rear hub, so the rear hub is pushed six millimeters farther to the drive side. What that means is the chain ring gets pushed six millimeters farther to the drive side. Because of this extra clearance we have, our chain stays got eight millimeters shorter. So what that does, in bringing your back wheel farther forward means you put more weight on your back wheel. So when you're powering through a muddy section, you can stay in the saddle, you can keep putting the power down, your tire's not losing traction, 
and you can go faster. You can keep the power on. You don't have to keep lifting up on the pedals, shifting back on the bike. You can stay on the saddle and be more balanced and continue accelerating through the mud. Traditionally, cyclocross bikes uh, have been fighting for more mud clearance and because of the constraint with the front derailleur, the chain ring, you can't add this clearance without solving a problem. And with AI, we've increased the spindle by a centimeter and what that does is opened up the chain stays. That gives us five more millimeters of tire clearance on the inside. So that means you have more mud clearance. More mud clearance for everybody racing cyclocross means you can spend more time on the course without having your tire drag on the chain stays. So you can put more time on the bike, you don't have to go back into the pit. And this benefits mostly amateur racers greatly. They don't have to be going into the pit and changing bikes by themselves. They can continue riding the bike and not have this drag. And when you're not in a UCI cross race, all that extra space means you can fit up to an aggressive 40C tire and still have ample clearance which just gives the Super X a whole other personality as an incredible gravel or adventure road bike. And if all that wasn't enough, a nice side benefit of AI, which again means you're dishing the rear hub over by six millimeters, is that you're eliminating unevenness that's inherent in standard wheels. You could even spoke bracing angles, tension on both sides, which makes the wheel stiffer and stronger, which just adds that whole feeling of explosive efficiency and snap that you get out of this bike. There's nothing custom about a AI rear wheel. It simply means you're dishing the rear hub over by six millimeters. Most likely if you have a 142 by 12 rear wheel at home right now, you can dish it over without having to replace any of the spokes. We studied a great number of wheels that are available right now during the development of this project and the vast majority of them can be dished without having to replace any of the spokes. It should take an experienced mechanic no more than 15 minutes to do and that's less time than it takes to glue on a tire. So that's the rear end, but we knew there were gains to be had up front. With our out front steering geometry, we figured out a way to enhance stability when things get sketchy without giving up that quick handle and feel that we love. To get stability in cyclocross bikes for, you know, for a long time, it was just having a long wheelbase. That was really the only way that they dealt with stability. You know, you were riding a road bike off road, which was very odd and a way to get around that was to just have a really long wheelbase and a fork that just you know laid out nice and long in the front um, but it made for a really slow feeling bike you know when you stand up out of a corner it wouldn't feel like you were in any kind of rush you know you're just like you're just going for it you're in you know just doing uh, making the donuts in the morning whatever um, so having you know having geometry changes to benefit what riders are really doing is something that is a strong point of this new bike. You know, it's really built around why people are riding and what they're doing when they ride. The biggest gain you feel on that bike is the confidence you have when you're descending. The head tube angle is slacker, the fork offset is longer, it's a trail driven geometry. The front wheel is farther in front of you, so your front center is farther in front of you. And when you're descending, you can actually let your front tire slide and pull it back. You're not gonna crash very easily. It's very confidence inspiring. And that's a direction that we felt would be a very good way to go with the new Super X. It's gonna impact everybody greatly. The professionals are gonna be able to feel it, but also the general public, the amateur racers on the bike, this is something they're really, really gonna appreciate because they're gonna feel more confident when they're riding the bike through a course. It's very common when you crash, you're very hesitant to go fast again. You lose all of your mojo. Your mojo is gone and you're off the back and you just want your race to be over. But if you feel like you can slide your bike and correct it again, you feel like a superstar. You get on the gas even harder. Save micro suspension technology has been at the heart of our performance and comfort story for years now. And on the Super X, we've pushed it even further than ever. The radically flattened shapes and layup of the rear stays are designed to flex to soak up bumps and chatter, keeping you in control on even the roughest courses. Another nice hidden feature or detail on this bike is a new internal binder that we developed. And what this does is eliminates roughly three centimeters of material past the top of the top tube, and that increases the amount of seat posts that you have extended. 
Also, we are going with a 25.4 seat post diameter down from the usual 27.2, and that has led us with an improvement in saddle deflection by 200%. So there's more deflection at the saddle, there's more comfort in the saddle, and what that means for the racer, you don't have to continue hovering over the saddle so much of the race, over rough rooted courses, you can continue staying seated and allow the frame to deflect a little bit more. And hovering over the saddle, you're using muscle in your legs just to keep your body off the ground. You're using more of the core strength too. We worked very closely with Stu Thorne in Cyclocross World and Development of this bike. He is very, very specific for what he wants. He has a very busy job. He has a lot of athletes. He builds and disassembles a lot of bikes. He has a lot of work to do in the pit. We need his feedback. We're designing bikes for athletes, for bike racers. So we decided to go with full internal housing. But the unique feature with this bike that nobody else is doing currently is entering the top tube, running through this junction, out of the seat stay, continuous housing. Continuous housing means it's not gonna get contaminated with mud or with sand or with dirt. So you can continue running your bike through a whole race, not have to replace your cables, not have to power wash the cables. For the rider, for the mechanic, it's easy. You can pull your cables in and out, no problem. They go right through. There's no fishing the lines out of the frame anymore. You know, if you're racing against someone, you, you kind of end up making bad mistakes sometimes because you just want to you just want to be there. You want to be able to, to have a chance to beat that person or maybe win that race. When you have a bike that's that's developed in a way that kind of gives you that extra that extra push and you know extra range to be able to do so, you know that's a huge vote of confidence for a rider.